emotionally intelligent everyone has to write this people with mental toughness and emotional fortification what do you mean by mr vikas mishra emotional fortification <laughs> you can stop recording yeah that's okay i hope you're recording mr vikas fortification oh you were talking about some supplements and vitamins mr park huh? park mr park we were discussing about vitamins and supplementation a word is used in the fortification industry i mean it is the vitamin and the mineral industry food fortified with vitamin c have you heard of such a thing or uh, for um, fortified food for the sports people and athletes what is it in supplemented blah 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 supplemented with th these these vitamins um for uh, vitamin b12 fortified milk products or cheese so what is supplementation or fortification when we supplement a food with something or we fortify a food product with something aapki ka suggestion tha mujhe lag raha tha sir kuch naam pata tha emotional fortification and we should be chit kyon hai he's trying to hide Capture him. You know, be that sneaky cameraman who captures celebrities when they are leaving. Are you professional? You know, there are certain very sneaky photographers who are keeping photos of celebrities when they are leaving. Which one would you? Papa, that's the types. <laughs> so the moment you open your mouth, you take a picture. Who are you talking about? Celebrities or something? A celebrity. Let's not die. is emotionally aware is emotionally sensitive emotionally connected to people is emotionally available to people but has the emotional intelligence to not be carried away by emotion not be an emotional fool this person who is emotionally fortified write down make your notes you should be jotting these things down a person who is emotionally fortified is emotionally sensitive is available is connected is concerned about you feels the emotion but is not consumed by emotion is not carried away either by his own emotion or by somebody else's emotion so when i tell pops to immediately switch and become serious and if he is not able to stop himself he is going on giggling it means cut right there okay now it's serious mode got to be serious so a person who can control their emotion is emotionally fortified if i tell pat stop your giggling right away right away the giggling stops that's the kind of control you have over your emotions that's the kind of training you get in the military wake up at 4 you wake up at 4 then in there no snooze button what emotion could you be going through at 4 am oh damn why do i need to get out of bed now i'm feeling lazy i'm nice and cozy and warm but you have discipline you have control over any emotion you feel and you throw that emotion out of the window and you stop giggling that's emotional fortification i can switch right now and crack a joke with joel again 
But two minutes later, I will be very serious and ask him a serious question. Some of you will have a tough time catching up with me. This is like an emotional roller coaster. Laughing, cracking jokes, serious again. Laughing again, serious about something again. Oh Jesus Christ, we need to catch up. The more you can do that with a person who is emotionally intelligent, the more emotionally intelligent or mature you are. But if you go on giggling, let's say, or if you have been laughing about something since morning and you can't stop, you carry on in the same mode till evening, you look at the Not even to stop yourself. There is no control. You lack emotional intelligence. Has everyone noted down this headache? Qualities of people who are mentally, people who are mentally tough. Amitesh Shahi, I will check your notes after this lecture. Which you have to write down. And emotionally intelligent. Okay, so I am going to assume that once your course is over, you are going to get a job. Most of you are going to get a job. Some of you might already be a part of a family business. But most of you are going to get the first job of your life. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Now I am also going to assume that you will not shift from job to job in multiple industries. Some people, in fact 99% people have jobs. They will really be in a model career because that is the subject I teach there. 99% people end up having jobs. 1% build a career. Let's quickly define the difference between the two. Because what is the difference between a job and a career? Job is just sake of earning money. Career is something that you can take forever. For over the period of time till what you earn. Or what you for a long time. Uh, you earn, you earn, you earn. A particular stream in a particular industry in that industry some keywords very close to the right answer but let's give it some more clarity a job is just a job so like I told Jayesh go get a marker and a duster for me and in return I'll give you 10 rupees for it every day this becomes a job yes or no yes. regardless of your industry regardless of your skill set regardless of where your interests lie, regardless of what you are really good at and can make a lot of money. You just take a job blindly, you are paid a certain wage for it and you do that job blindly. Jayesh does the same job, let's say for two years, goes to the reception, gets the marker and the duster for me, then he gets bored, goes to some other organization, starts to carry piles of files to the third floor and gets paid 100 rupees for that thing. This is another job. But is he building a career? Now let's assume. Let's assume Mr. Park. That you have chosen an industry for yourself based on your skill set. Do you have any plan with regards to your first job? Kis industry may have a better job choose career? Assume Karnoya. Let's remove business or any startup from the picture. If these were not the options in your life, which industry would you choose based on your skill set or your area of interest? Or where you think you can excel? Bank. Huh? Banking. Banking. Alright. So somebody decides to start a career in banking. So you join a bank at a particular position, let's say. Now, I am not a subject matter expert or a resource person in the field of banking. But let's assume, Fahad, I want to you know, ask the next question from you, so please pay attention. Banking, I start at the junior most position probably as an intern and then maybe I grow into an assistant managerial position probably within the same bank. Then I decide to switch my bank from a small bank to a much larger bank in terms of scale and size. 
but i have to either continue at the same position as an assistant manager or maybe the title of my job description my job designation downgrades a bit and i start as an intern again because now the scale of the bank is rather huge but i start again and then i become an assistant manager and then i become the manager then i become the managing director but please pay attention fahad is my industry changing right now no i'm still in the banking industry and I'm, i'm still a banker i'm becoming a senior banker mishra ji bahut hansi aa rahi hai and we will not pause this mishra ji you have any inputs to give here no inputs no inputs no smiles okay so in turn again at a big bank then assistant manager managing director if your career has an upward growth keeping in mind your job designation and the company that you work for put together and if you're constantly growing you are building a career for yourself but if you are hopping skipping and jumping from job to job or jobs one year over here six months over there eight months somewhere else then you got bored that's not a career you just have random jobs okay so people most of you i am assuming are going to be building careers intentional careers where you see yourself growing and i think i have not shared this but write down the first pp line for today you have to monitor your growth if you are planning on building a career which i believe most of you are you will tap your shoulder and check yourself every one and a half to two and a half years and ask yourself these two questions ye do sawal likh lijiye this is how you monitor your growth in your own career no one else will your boss will not your company will not the first question will be today what is my job title what am i serving as that's your first question be write it down what is my designation today second what company am i serving and you will take a nice look at the scale and the size and the profile of your own company जैसे कंपनी आपको परखती है जॉब देने से पहले आपका भी हक है इस कंपनी को परखने का कितना दम है इस कंपनी में कितनी बड़ी कंपनी है कितनी क्रेडिबिलिटी है इस कंपनी की हाउ मच इज दिस कंपनी नोन वर्ल्ड वाइड ना द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन मिश्रा व्हाट वाज द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज माय जॉब डेजिग्नेशन टुडे यू विल गेट एन आंसर ब्लब 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 इज योर जॉब डेजिग्नेशन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन यू विल आस्क योरसेल्फ फॉर हाउ लॉन्ग हैव आई बीन सिटिंग ऑन दिस जॉब टाइटल कितना समय हो गया मुझे इसी जॉब डेजिग्नेशन पे अगर आपका जवाब है दो साल अमितेश फॉर एग्जाम्पल विल से टाइम टू बगल आई एम गोइंग टू गिव माई सेल्फ सिक्स मंथ्स मोर एंड अपग्रेड माई जॉब टाइटल इफ आई लव दिस कंपनी एंड आई वॉन्ट स्टे समझ में आना है नेक्स्ट फाहद माइंड हैव अ डिफरेंट ओपिनियन ही माइंड से टू ईयर्स सेम जॉब डेजिग्नेशन ओके it's still okay but now I'm looking for something i need some more work experience before i can move to the next destination i am a manager of sales for example but i am yet not ready to handle the responsibilities of a leader who is the managing director i need some more time but probably it's time to start searching for greener pastures which means a bigger and a better company which will give me vast exposure to more work and more work experience why because i think i've discussed this with you when you take up a job the question should not be what am i supposed to do here what am i becoming here so fahad might now say i need more experience but this small company is only able to give me so much of work experience i need more i need to become more so that i can add more value and i can start earning more money and i can get a senior designation but i need some time to grow but this company has given me all that it can there is no further scope of growth for me so far i will start to look for bigger and better companies 
that might be the case. In that case, Fahad may not mind starting at an assistant managerial position again, provided the company is Google and not HCL anymore, for example. Yes or no? Yes, sir. HCL is nickel, but Google hired him. Now Fahad does not mind investing one more year at Google because part Google is Google. Yes or no? HCL is HCL. TCS is TCS, but Goldman Sachs is Goldman Sachs. In some companies, kya profile say PG. Assistant manager of Goldman Sachs makes a huge impact. Assistant manager is here. Good. But not like Kamal Karpia. Okay? So most of you are going to be building careers. And if you are going to be building careers, ain't happening without this. Ain't happening without this. Now, if you build careers, I'm going to assume, I hope to assume that most of you will eventually end up in the C-suite category. What is the C-suite category? C-suite, like the business suite. Business suite, hotels, yeah. I want to book the business suite. So there's a C-suite in a multinational company. What is that? Vikas Mishra, aapko to ye patao hona chahi. Mr. Fahad, let's focus. <laughs> Lack of emotional intelligence right here. <coughs> Mr. Fahad, what could be the C-suite? The C-suite and I hope to see you there one day, Mr. Vikas Mishra. Is the place where the top executive sits in a company. The chief executive officer, the chief functional officer, the chief operations officer, COO, CFO, CEO. These are the top people. They are the game changers. They scale the next level. They raise the bar. C suite Uber Jo Hota hai. Wo bas board of directors hota hai. There's nobody here. So eventually, for all of you, take your career to the CEO level. Then, you are a businessman, right? So, haan, so you will be the right question. You will be the right question. But, and you will also think about it. Please, I'm going to ask in Hindi. How many of you are going to be supporting family businesses? Please raise your hand. This question was like, for all that, so sad, deep up your husband's heart right there. Anyone else coming from a family business? Okay, so you also think about it. Kya aapko lagta hai? Vikas Mishra, I want to think about it also. Madaak nahi kar diya. Yes. We could dedicate a camera man. Sanyo would dedicate it. Abhishek Chai. Thank you. Say, say Salami, relax. You need to calm down. Calm down. Take a deep breath, calm down. A CEO or a businessman who can do that. Think about it. Take 30 seconds to think. Is there any difference between a CEO and an entrepreneur? Or a businessman or a businessman? No. So, here, yeah, my next question is going to be why? Aftab, he said no. Please focus on Aftab. Aftab, why do you think so? English, Hindi, whatever works for you. But we need to know why there is no difference. CEO, make strategy, make strategy, make planning, make staffing, everything move on. The same thing is made up to work. अपने बिजनेस को लेके मतलब प्लानिंग ऑर्गेनाइजिंग स्टाफिंग एवरीथिंग ये डू द सेम थिंग पूरा एक फाइनल आंसर लेने के लिए ही मेक्स द प्लान वो प्लान तभी बना सकता है जब उसके पास एक ब्रॉड विजन है अ बिजनेस मैन हैज अ विजन फॉर हिज बिजनेस टेन इयर्स डाउन द लाइन आई वांट टू सी माय बिजनेस देयर इलॉन मस्ट डस दैट द सीईओ हैज टू डू द सेम थिंग फॉर हिज कंपनी ही इज द फेस ऑफ द कंपनी Every day he talks to the world, explaining the vision of the company. 
same thing. So please make some noise, here some notes. The similarities between a CEO and an entrepreneur. Anyone who has a startup or runs a family business or is the owner of a big business, a self-made business now or a business owner, they have some similarities. Point number one, ask up is very close to the answer. Both have a broad vision. They have a vision where they will take their business. It might be an MNC or a multinational corporation, but it is also generating business. Am I right, Aftar? Yes, sir. It is. It is a business that we use it. They both have a broad vision. Both, number two, same similarity. Both take calculated risks. A businessman takes risks too. A CEO does as well. You need to have an appetite for risks. Otherwise, you can't do it. <laughs> Third, Third similarity, both are very comfortable being uncomfortable. Like look, it's wordplay. Both of them are very comfortable being uncomfortable. Aftab Samaj mein aya hoa tumhe? If you have, mene kai baar shayad bola hai, Vikas tum bhi sundo ya? If you have a 9 to 5 employee mindset, so we are going to go to 5 o'clock, it will get so much time to get so much time. You are in a zone, which is known as what? It's called C session, who can tell me? You are in which zone? Comfort zone. Who said that? Yes, let's focus. Yes, Mr. Vikas, Vikas, you know what I'm saying? You want me to focus on me? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Comfort zone. Like the comfort zone. But both the CEO and the businessman, they take calculated risks, which means they are willing to go through chaos and they enter the growth zone. So, I like that. I'm appreciating you. Okay. So, you can write it down. Both of them live in the growth zone, not in the comfort zone. It's a similarity. They step out of their comfort zone, enter a stage of chaos, and they grow. Their business grows, and the business of the MNC grows as well. Because they take risks and you can't take risks as long as you are in your cocoon of comfort and safety. Now, what's the difference between these two? Only one difference. It's a common sense based difference. There's a difference between a CEO and an entrepreneur. <coughs> common sense guy. Related to money. Yes. You want to say something? Profit. Unprofit. Yes, see you a position, a position I have in business. You're somewhere close. Could you develop on it, Shahi? Uh, From CEO work on salary and entrepreneur work on profit. That's it! <laughs> Could I refine your answer a little bit with some fancy language? Write down, one generates his own income. Generates. Jitna man kya unni generate ho jati hai. Why? Because of profits. Because a businessman knows. He or she is not getting paid for their time. They are getting paid for the value they generate. Am I right? Vika, aapka naam kya hai? Jitni zyada value create hoongi. Jitni zyada value create hoongi, utna zyada revenue hooga. Utna profit, jitna zyada value of our number of profit. So, one generates his or her own income as they wish. Jitna income chahiye, utna value generate karlo, utna profit generate karlo. And the other one has also got a vision, is generating business for his company, so gets paid by the board of directors. However, this is the only difference. One generates, one is paid. You might go outside. Okay. However, yes, difference here is that the businessman, the businessman has got more leverage or advantage. Why? 
because everything is profit based so there is no limit to the amount of revenue they can generate for themselves but a ceo will have a salary although the salary will be very high as well but there is a limit to it there is a limit to it that's the only difference okay next point let's go back to similarities again that was the only difference one more similarity between a ceo and a businessman i think i've discussed this in this class maybe uh, did i discuss about politics in this class have you not ever discussed about the importance of being politically savvy no we have we have we have when we were discussing how to meet with different people so all of them are politically savvy they are very political people they see they love politics businessmen they love politics ceo they love politics but again let me clarify not because they want to destroy people not because they want to manipulate people not because they are narcissists but because they have exceptional communication skills they understand human psychology well and they can handle human relationships well that's how their business grows and that's how uh, i would say that's how the name or the fame of the company grows as well it all depends on how efficient you are at managing human relations through communication and your understanding of human psychology clear so whether you end up as a c suite executive congratulations or you end up as a businessman there's hardly any difference you take a ceo out of a company and tell that person you want to become a businessman 9 ten or 100 that person is not going to fail will be a successful businessman you take a businessman out of his business make him the ceo of a company trust me the company will continue to grow itself why because the mindsets are the same they are risk takers they don't believe in comfort zones they will always grow dono ko nikal ke alag alag situations mein dal do the business will also prosper the company will also prosper clear so far next heading next point if you can write it down as a side heading if you want you got to be mentally tough if you want to be a ceo or a businessman mental toughness you got to have mental toughness You got to have mental toughness to either be a CEO or a businessman. Now, being tough is the star opposite of someone who is simple and innocent and uh, sensitive. Am I right? A tough person is the opposite of a simple, innocent, sensitive person. Am I saying anything wrong about that? That's the opposite. However. Am I asking you to become insensitive, destroy people, damage people? Stop nudging his leg. Thank you. It's okay. It's a workout. Am I telling you to be insensitive? No. But what am I telling you to be? Don't be carried away. Bilkul the place. बोल दो बिल्कुल सही बोला तुमने. Jai. Correct answer. Don't get carried away. It's okay to feel emotion. Please feel it, but don't get carried away by it. Don't be consumed by it. Don't become an emotional fool. It's okay to be emotionally available to your workers. It's okay to be sensitive to the emotions of your colleagues, but don't get carried away in emotion and don't make things personal at work. And don't let anyone. Mess with your emotions. That's also part of emotional intelligence. So I'm not telling you to be insensitive and mess around with people, but I'm telling you to make sure that no one messes with your emotions. And you feel emotions, but you still stay grounded, and you have a clear vision of reality. An emotionally sensitive person. Has a very distorted vision of reality. So 
Now, what's the best combination for a CEO or a businessman to achieve? On one side, I say you have to be very more, very mentally tough. On another side, I'm still telling you not to be insensitive, or you are also tapping his leg. That was very sweet of you. Okay. On another side, I'm telling you, hey, 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 don't be insensitive. Feel emotions. Be emotionally available. Be emotionally sensitive. It's a little dicey. It's a little confusing. So how do we strike the balance? Okay. Now I'm saying, don't get carried away by emotion. Don't be consumed. So what's the best combination? Which is a formidable combination. Unstoppable. Unbeatable. Let's go. Be mentally tough. Be mentally tough. Plus, have a good heart. You've got to be mentally strong, no doubt about that. But have a good heart. Now, some people fail because they only have a good heart. They're not strong mentally. Please be honest, raise your hands. Do you know such people in your life? Very good people, sensitive, but they are not tough over here. We know such people. Let me know if they are successful when it comes to financial success. Now, on the other hand, you will, find, you will know some people who are absolutely power hungry. They are, they, they, they are vultures of power. And they are very mentally tough. They are hyper successful, high achievers, but they are completely emotionally disconnected. Do you know such people in your life? Yes. Completely emotionally, nothing to do with emotions, but very power hungry. You know such people. That is one extreme, and this is one extreme. The Mother Teresa is another extreme. You can't be somewhere in between. So, you have to be mentally strong. And you have to be good like Lady Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela. Take the goodness from there. Keep your emotions in place. Feel them. Be sensitive to them. Don't get tired of but be emotionally strong or mentally strong. So that people can't play with your emotions. I'm not saying that you have to play with other people's emotions. But you have to be so emotionally intelligent that you are aware of what you are feeling. You can regulate your emotions like Mr. Park, you are not able to do right now. You should be able to keep your emotions under control like you should be trying right now. Emotions should not be driving you, which is kind of happening right now. So, be emotionally intelligent and not get carried away. Like I can smile and still laugh while talking to him, but bam, the next moment I'm back in my zone. Mentally strong and with a good heart. Emotionally sensitive at the same time. Now, write down the qualities of such people. We have to discuss five qualities. Five qualities of such people. Mentally tough and emotionally intelligent. Point number one. They start by the I mean these people. Qualities of these people. They start by assuming. He assumed particularly. They start by assuming that the world is unfair and tough. But I'm going to They start with the assumption that the world is unfair and tough. Ye apni journey ko start karne se pehle months ki hote hain the world is going to be tough and fair. Iska kya fayda hota hai? Anyone can tell me? Ek fayda hota hai. Is attitude ka fayda kya hai? Kya hota hai? You can think of one. Uh, Ma'am, these people uh, basically are prepared to uh, tackle such situation in which they get uh, unfair um, result. They are not prepared for a situation where the world is going to be unfair. But who's the fair age is up here? Acceptance. They are in the acceptance mode. Why such it? We see this in the world all the time, don't we? 
I see so many hard workers, but they don't get their due credit. The world is unfair. So one, it brings them into the acceptance mode. Literally. The first advantage of this attitude, they are in an acceptance mode. Second, very interesting. It's called who word for worthy. Only when life is unfair, whether you like it or not, especially this is especially for children who are still staying with their parents in their parents' homes. This is especially for those. Only when life is unfair, there are ample opportunities for growth. There are ample opportunities for growth. Simple examples I will give you. I've given examples from Dr. Vikas Divikit, he's like many times. Vikas Divikit, he's like many times. And then you can search for your own YouTube. The CEO and founder of Drifty IS, Coaching Institute. Recently, he was called to some state in the Northeast and he was giving this example. He said, Rajasthan is an area. Please pay attention to this. राजस्थान के कुछ जिलों में बारिश होती है और कुछ जिलों में बरसात नहीं होती है जिन जिलों में बरसात होती है वहां पर खेती बाड़ी होती है सब बड़ी है घर भी है खाना भी है बरसात भी है वो लोग जी रहे हैं अच्छे से उनका काम चल रहा है बट जिन जिलों में बरसात नहीं होती वहां पर आप खेती बाड़ी नहीं कर सकते आप नौकरी नहीं कर सकते आप उद्यम नहीं कर सकते उद्यम नहीं You can't do it. Why? Because everyone is poor. आप उद्यम नहीं कर सकते। तो अब ये लोग उद्यम करने के इन जिलों से बाहर निकले, मजबूर हो गए करने के लिए, क्योंकि कोई ऑप्शन ही नहीं था। अब यही कम्युनिटी है जो कि पूरे भारत में सबसे बड़ी बिजनेस कम्युनिटी जान जाती है, तो मालवाड़ी इसलिए। It's a very interesting phenomenon. अगर आपके पास सब कुछ है आपके पास घर भी है खाने पीने को भी है कपड़े भी है सारे संसाधन है रिसोर्सेस है बरसात भी बढ़िया होती है आप ज्यादा से ज्यादा एक बढ़िया जिंदगी जी सकते हैं लेकिन अगर आपको कुछ कमाल करना है तो आपको लाइफ के चैलेंजेस को फेस करना होगा यू हैव टू फेस सम क्राइसिस लाइफ में कुछ क्राइसिस होना बहुत जरूरी है टू ओवरकम इट बिकम डॉ and then live that Kamal Wadi Zim. The Kamal Wadi is still just that. The top business community of the country today. So if you want to write that down as an example, that is, that is the biggest example. When life is unfair, Kamal Wadi could have thrived. Life is so unfair. This zilla mein hain, wapit baal hain, baal hain, what do you do? They could have been complaining, shikayat karte do, rote do, victim ban jau, but they did not. They stepped out, they overcome, they overcame a crisis, see where they are today. The Mahabharis. Or, jinn jinnon mein aaj bhi barsat hoti hai, maha pe dog aaj bhi rekhe hoi hai, woh Mahabharis nahi hai. Or jinn jinnon mein aaj bhi barsat nahi hoti, kyunki sao saal pehle bhi nahi hoti thi, woh aaj the Mahabharis bane hoi hai, poori dunia mein pehle hoi hai. You can find a Mahabharis at anywhere. You go to Dubai, there are Mahabharis from Rajasthan. You go to America, there are Malpadis are everywhere. Why? There is no doubt in that area. Think about it. Next point, which is related to this point. When you accept that life is unfair and tough, automatically you will get out of your complaining mode. Shikaya. Every thing is shikaya. No. No complaining. No crime, no self victimization. Self victimization क्या होता है इसका? खुद को victim बना लेना। बरसात नहीं होती, मैं तो victim हूँ। So no victimization, no complaining. Have you ever heard about this famous author? You must have. Robert Greene, Forty Eight Laws of Power. Robert Greene की एक बहुत ही favorite quote है। He says, Don't complain, don't explain. इसका मतलब क्या है? If there is a problem, if life is unfair, if there is a challenge, stop complaining. Do something about it. And when you do something about it, don't explain it to anyone. 
Why? Why don't explain? Because you're telling it? No. Because you had the guts to do what others could not. So stop explaining to the donkeys. Don't complain. Lick lije. Kamaya. Business ne kamaya. Don't complain and don't explain. Because if you complain, you are the loser anyway. Donkeys are complaining all the time. Mere paas ye nahi hai, mere paas wo nahi hai. Uski wajah se ye ho gaya. Usne mera ye kar diya. Don't complain. Now when you have achieved something, the other donkeys are there. You have become a tiger. Don't explain. You are, you are now entitled to a good life which you earn. Clear with this point? Second point of such people. Qualities of such people. Who are who little yaar? They don't expect people to be predictable or reliable. Life ka dusra karna such. They don't expect people to be predictable or reliable. Reliable me sama jata hai. Trustworthy, dependable. I will not expect part to be trustworthy or dependable. And I will not expect Jayesh to be trustworthy or dependable. That's the mindset of a rich man or a rich woman. Now you might again think, oh my god, this is such a bad thing to say. Like you want to distrust everyone. You will never trust anyone? No, I'm not trying to say that. You have to understand that people are people. People are always going to be people. Somebody is going to lie to you. Somebody is going to backstab you. Somebody will certainly deceive you. Somebody will be something on your face and somebody else behind your back. How many of you know such people? Raise your hand. I, I want the whole class to be raising your hand at this time. If you don't know such people, you are either living under a rock or you don't belong to this world. So we think it's thinking of Okay. You know such people? So I am not saying that rich people don't trust anyone. I am saying they have the maturity to accept that people are people and some of them are going to mess with you. So again, they don't start crying about it. They don't complain, oh, so they have said something. That person betrayed me in business. That person cheated me in business. He cheated on me with another girl. No. Rich people understand. Big people. Big people understand what is going to happen. So what do they do? What do they do? Think about it. See, some people are good, some people are not going to be good to you. They understand that. So how do they build their empire? Because they can't do everything. It's okay, I'm Asia, I don't believe you. How do they build their empire? When they know that almost everyone is going to be a liar. How do they build their empire? What do they do? They just let go what what is not very good. They will let go of such people for sure. A liar? Hmm? Oh, that's what I'm going to do. Could they? Could they? Could they? Could they? Could they? Could they? हम उसे कंट्रोल नहीं करेंगे, हम उसको जाने भी देंगे, लाया, सब कुछ आप नहीं हैं, मैं आपको कंट्रोल नहीं कर सकता, तो आप क्या करेंगे? जान दोगे, but that is not the only thing. जान दोगे तो बहुत लोग जाएंगे, but then they got to have a strategy in place, मैं उसकी बात कर रही हूँ. Of course, I'm the king of my land. अगर आपने मुझे धोखा दिया है, अगले दिन तो लाओ. अगले दिन तो लाओ how do they create a game plan to find the best people? How do they get to that backup? That's my question. My question is going down to the root. How do they create that? Yamko pata hai jaata hai. Yamko pata hai ki unka ek small team bane ka hai player ka. Kuban dar ke. And if you mind Yamko, I come to this class. Do you think I trust you? 
No, I didn't at all. Do you think any of you are reliable? Never. Never. But yes, for now, the mindset of the rich person. For now, I have been testing all of you over a period of time. I have tested all of you. So if I am a CEO and you are my team, there is a class representative who is absent today. And there are some people who I interact with more on a regular basis. I am sure all of you are aware of those people. Am I interacting more with them because I like them? Because they are my residents? No. I am observing everyone. I am observing everyone for the last 4 or 5 months later. So, some people on my team have earned my trust for oh, now. Yes. These people make sure that people earn their trust and even this trust is short lived. It depends on the earning potential. It depends on the earning potential of the team member. So I will trust some people on my team, but I have tested them. I have tested them for four months in this classroom. And that is why I am trusting them because they earned my trust, but it's in the condition again. But I'm too. I trust our staff, but I may not trust him tomorrow if he fails one of my tests. The day he fails my test, he's out. I could give an example, but I'm not going to name that person. That person failed my test. He's not a CR today. Yes or no? Rich people are constantly testing everyone on their team. You fail one test, you're out of the game. I'll talk to you. Huh? Huh? Please go. Right up in the line. This is very important for your business. You just need a small bunch of eight players. You athletes ko bhi samaj mein aayega, business people ko bhi samaj mein aayega. Apparently, you just need a small bunch of we call them in business. एक नाम बोला जाता है, terminology है। Let's focus on this. No, no, no. अरे, Mr. Jayesh. Yes, ma'am. A players. Focus. Focus. Let's let's zoom into this fancy term. You just need a small bunch of A players to run your business. You don't need a whole military of average mediocre people. At least you will understand that. Need a small team of dedicated A players. Baki sab backup kyon hai? Kam kuri ya backup kuri ya. Majburi mein. Otherwise no. A players. Aur ye ten A players are better than thousands of mediocre players. Clear? Point number three. Point number three for these people. They don't feel sorry for themselves. Rich people, successful people, mentally tough people. They don't feel sorry for themselves. Do I have to explain this point? No, don't no. feel sorry for themselves. I think the first point is clear. When you have believed that life is going to be tough and unfair, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop complaining. Next point is the fourth point of mentally tough people. They accept that people will come and people will go. Just as seasons are there, seasons will come and seasons will go. Winters came. Winters are going away, people will come in your life and people will go away from your life. Okay, if you follow a very famous YouTuber, Mohammed Ameri Khalid from Dubai, he will ask a question mark. Oh, Mr. Jay, should you be a little closer and deal with everyone? Ah. He will ask a question. You know, you have so many people working on your team and you're also very creative in that space. How do you feel when someone leaves you? So Khalid said, and I was so inspired by what he said, I think everyone should follow it. He said, I know that everyone is going to have their journey. People have joined me and they have left me, but once they have really achieved something monumental in their life, once they really become big, I want them to look back and I want them to think that I had the biggest learning experience, the most fruitful learning journey with Khalid. That's what I want for them. 
So be a giver while people are working with you. Don't always take, take, take. And then don't feel offended when people leave you. Don't take things personal. Oh, Parks left my company. Now I will not be the vengeful boss running after Parks like trying to murder him. No. Parks had to leave. It's his life journey. It's his decision. And you have to accept it. But while Parks is with you, make sure that his learning curve and his learning journey has been a very fruitful one with you. But here is one point to add, if you know Rajiv Kalreja, one of the most famous business coaches from India. He also has a philosophy. Please understand business people and entrepreneurs, your people will leave you. Your team, you will train them for 2 years, you will train them for 2 years, you will train them for 2 years. Don't business people face this challenge? So you got to be smart. What do you do in that case? So uh, Abhishek Rai, after two years of training, he has been working for two years and has been learning everything about business. After two years, he has been working for two years. Irritation will be done, it will be angry, he has invested in it. So what can you do so that he can't go away because he will never go away. But, but, ऐसे ही ना चला जाए आपसे सब कुछ सीख के, so that you don't feel that you got the lower end of the deal and that person got the higher end of the deal. क्या कर सकते हैं to safeguard your company's interests? Have a smart exit policy in place. अपने कंपनी में exit policy बनाइए. Exit policy क्या बोलेगी? First of all, you will give us the notice. कि जाने वाले हैं नहीं तो बहुत नुकसान हो सकते हैं। For example अभिषेक ट्राइ कर से this much money you invested in your training you want the money back so you still have power over your employee while your employee is working for you you have power have a smart exit policy in place second before they leave they train the next batch of people who will continue the work on their behalf once they have left you. And then forget about them, let them go. Okay, interesting question. Abhishek Rai, what if they come back to you after two months? Sorry, sir. Could I come back and join your company? Please, interesting. This is from a businessman's point of view. Sorry, sir, but you be sir. You are everything, sir. Sir, I made a mistake, sir. Sir, sir, please. <laughs> it happens all the time. Happens all the time. What would you do? Two schools of thought. A, what is it? Sudeta Gaya, Shamuko. Sudeta Gaya, Shamuko. Sudeta Gaya, Shamuko. Can you please tell that to everyone? Sudeta Gaya, Shamuko. Not me. I know. So, some people might follow this philosophy. I did go. Abhi nine to join the lawyer. Two years of training didn't break. Ye yaar chaliye. Jaane se pehle jo bhi training thi, ko three months mein de do thi. Lekin two years ki training aur three months ki crash course mein aata hoga. Ya abhi isko train kar paaye. Aur iska bhi koi bhrosa nahi hai. Wo two years tha hamare saath. Bonus le lete hain. There is less risk. There is less risk in taking back a known enemy, a familiar enemy, than accepting an unknown friend. Yes or no? He is still unknown to me. But when I am not a friend, I am not a friend. So there is less risk in accepting a well-known enemy than an unknown friend. That's one school of thought. Yeah, this school of thought is the other. And the other one is like the husband-wife policy, you cheated on me once, you're out of my life. No coming back. So, for example, if the husband comes back and apologizes to his wife, hey, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, you are the one, the wife would say, there is no return policy. You cheated on me, I'm not your mistress, go stay with your mistress, you're out, I'm not accepting you back. The divorce is done. It's over. So, two business people can have completely two different mindsets. Whether you accept somebody back, 
सुबह का गया शाम को आ गया ब्ला 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 और इट्स ए डिवोर्स यू चीन ऑन मी इट्स ओवर क्लियर कितने पॉइंट्स कवर हो गए नो फोर दे एक्सेप्ट दैट पीपल विल कम एंड पीपल विल गो नेक्स्ट पॉइंट ओ माय गॉड दिस इज द बिगेस्ट वन दे डोंट कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑन देयर वैल्यूज वैल्यूज पे कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं करते दे डोंट कॉम्प्रोमाइज I can give you my own example from the slums. I don't compromise on the value of discipline. No matter who you are, I don't compromise on the value of honesty. No matter who you are, I don't compromise on the value of good behavior, manners, and etiquette. No matter who you are. So I'm not compromising. I can give you one more example from my life. I was raised in a middle class family. People told me, "Anu, you should be reasonable. Be reasonable. Don't be uncompromising." मैं आज आपका अब बोलूँ आपका भी आप be reasonable. What does it mean? Be reasonable. Be reasonable, Tom. What are you asking for? Be reasonable. It just means one thing: accept whatever is given to you. Be reasonable. No. So the rich person or the big person says, "No, I am not going to be reasonable. I will not compromise on my values." Amitesh Shahi, what happens when you don't compromise on your values as a businessman, as a businessman? What kind of a team will you build when you don't compromise on your values? Like, say your company has a set of values. You build those values because you are the owner. अब आपकी जो टीम बनेगी वो टीम कैसी होगी अगर आप कॉम्प्रोमाइज करने टाइप के हैं नहीं रीजनेबल नहीं है आप कॉमन सेंस यार ए प्लेयर्स योर टीम विल बी अ टीम ऑफ ए प्लेयर्स यू विल हैव द बेस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट बिकॉज यू विल कॉम्प्रोमाइज यू विल ओनली हैव द बेस्ट टीम ऑन योर टीम यहां का भी एग्जाम्पल लेके बोल सकती हूँ Because I don't compromise, the undisciplined, the undisciplined ones are out of my class. The only ones in this class, the ones who can hold themselves in this class. So you get the best of the best people on your team. Last point for today before we wrap up, <coughs> Mr. Par. Emotional intelligence पे काम करने की बहुत ज़रूरत है. The first consequence. Of not compromising in business on your values, not compromising on your values in your business, you have the best of the best. That's number one. Par, please write down. I want everyone to write down. Number two, you will only have people who are aligned with your values. When you work with people who are aligned with your values, it's a win-win situation for the whole company or your business. I'm sorry. But just for a joke, you can also extend this into your personal life. If you marry someone who is aligned with your values, trust me, 99 out of 100, your marriage will not end up in divorce. When you marry someone whose core fundamental values match with yours, trust me, that marriage is bound to work. The same thing applies to business. समझ में आ रहा था जयेश दिस वॉज माई पीस ऑफ एडवाइस टू यू बिकॉज आई वॉज टोल बाई योर फ्रेंड इट यू आर विकास मिश्रा इज कीन ऑफ मैरिज सो मेक श्योर दट योर पार्टनर्स वैल्यूज आर अलाइन विद योर दैट्स माई टू पिक्स टू पिक्स ऑफ एडवाइस टू सेंट्स ऑफ एडवाइस थैंक यू सो मच